Hey guys, it's Charles from Tech Always, and one of the biggest reasons people get into console gaming is because they think it's cheap in the PC gaming. What if I told you that for just $250, shipping and taxes included, you could have an amazing gaming PC that can play all the most popular and newest games? Meet Neil, the 2017 all new parts $250 gaming PC. So let's get right into it. So the basis of this build was to show that you could build a gaming PC for less than the price of a console, which did take a lot of deal hunting. So the prices I'm going to talk about in this video aren't the MSRPs on the product, it's just what I paid through about a month of looking at deals. So while with this approach it may take a while to get your build done, over about a month I was able to cut off $125 from what I would have paid if I had bought everything on the same day. But with that said, let's look at what parts I got and how much I paid. So starting off this build is the Pentium G4560. The CPU currently has no competition anywhere near it with its two cores and four threads at 3.5 GHz on the KB-like architecture at just an MSRP of just $65. It was out of stock everywhere after it came out for months, but it has come in stock recently and on Jet.com I was able to pick this up for a measly $51.28, making the deal even sweeter. For the cooler, I just used the included stock heatsink, which isn't the best but gets, and gets the job done on the lock CPU as long as you don't care about the noise too much. The CPU is being housed in the MSI B150 Pro VD motherboard. Keep in mind that if you want to go with an 100 series chipset, you'll need to update the BIOS with an older Skylake CPU, but after that you're good to go. While this motherboard doesn't have any super cool features, it was crazy cheap at just $21 after a $10 rebate. For RAM, I picked up one 8GB stick of crucial 2133MHz DDR4 for $51.96 off Amazon. This made it the second most expensive part in the entire build. These current RAM prices are crazy and I was actually pretty happy to pick it up for this cheap, even though last year I could have gotten 16GB for just a little bit more. This RAM is extremely basic running at the minimum speeds for DDR4 with no heat spreaders and a bare green PCB, but it'll get the job done. For storage I went with the standard of 1TB of hard drive storage. The drive doesn't seem to have a name and had OEM packaging, but it has everything you need in a drive. 7200RPM, SATA 6GB and 64MB of cache. I picked this up from Micro Center for $31.79, making it about $15 cheaper than you would regularly pay for a drive like this. Powering everything I've talked about is the Corsair VS480 Plus power supply. This is part of Corsair's new line and has similar reliability to their old CX line. This unit is non-modular and has pretty ugly ketchup and mustard cables, but considering how power efficient recent GPUs have gone and the fact that it has an 80 plus rating, I was happy to grab this for $12.98 after a $20 rebate. Housing all the components is a Zalman T5. This isn't a very nice case or anything. I would actually go as far as to call it a bad case because it has very spa little space to work with and felt pretty flimsy, but for a price of just $13.98, I couldn't pass it up. The final component of the build, the one that actually makes it a gaming PC, is the ASUS Dual RX460 2GB. This is a really nice GPU with a dual fan design and a large heatsink that allowed the card to actually stay under 55 degrees under load while staying extremely quiet. And the best part about this card is that I was able to pick it up for just $84.79. That paired with a $20 rebate brought the price down to just $64.79, bringing the final cost of the build to $248.74, keeping it under the goal price of $250, also making it cheaper than the Xbox One S and the PS4 Slim, the console competitors to this build. Now for the build montage.
So now that you know what's inside this budget beast, let's get into those benchmarks. Fraps was used to record the minimum, maximum, and average FPS in all the games, along with MSI Afterburner for that on-screen overlay. I used a camera to record the screen to reduce the impact on performance when actually recording. So now that you know how I did the benchmarks, let's get right into them. Starting off with the synthetic benchmark 3D Mark Fire Strike, this PC scored 4,776, which is actually lower than my $100 build, but this benchmark is pretty reliant on GPU performance, so that makes sense. The next synthetic benchmark I ran was the new Unigen Superposition benchmark on 1080p medium settings. This scored 3,286 with a minimum FPS of 20.75, an average of 24.58, and a max of 30.66. Getting to the real games, I'm going to start off with the least demanding games and move up to the more demanding games. So the least demanding game I tested was CSGO, which on absolute max settings got a minimum of 114 FPS, a max of 237, and an average of 184, which is great performance that would even allow you to take advantage of a high refresh rate monitor if you were looking for that competitive edge. The next game I tested was Rocket League, again on absolute maxed out settings except for motion blur because let's be real, who really likes motion blur? This game had a minimum of 78 FPS, a maximum of 131, and an average of 104 FPS. Again, it was super playable and looked great. Rounding out our list of competitive games, I tested Blizzard's popular FPS Overwatch. This game I actually tested at two presets, High and Ultra, Ultra being the maxed out settings because Ultra was just under 60 FPS and I wanted to show that this PC could easily hit 60 on all these competitive games. So with the high preset, this build had a minimum of 91 FPS, a max of 135, and an average FPS of 106, which would be great for anybody who is serious about the game. If you just play for fun though and prefer it to look a little better, you can turn the settings to the ultra preset and get an average of 50 FPS with a minimum max of 43 and 58 respectively. The next game I tested was the early access battle royale game Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which has been eating up a lot of my time recently and I highly recommend it, but because it's early access it's still poorly optimized. On the low preset with the exception of medium textures and ultra viewing distance, this PC only achieved a minimum of 35 FPS, a max of 51 and an average of 44. While it's still playable, it could be smoother and would have been nice to hit 60 FPS. Now moving to some AAA games, we have GTA 5. On very maxed out settings with the exception of no MSAA, as it absolutely kills your PC, we got an average of 54 FPS, a minimum of 24, and a max of 140 FPS. This was really impressive considering this was maxed out and you could easily lower the settings by just a little bit to grab that 60 FPS mark. The final game I tested was the extremely demanding Doom at medium settings. Even though the settings were turned down, we were only able to get a minimum of 35, a max of 59, and an average of 42 FPS. But keep in mind, this is one of the most demanding games on the market. So overall, I'm really happy with how this PC turned out. While you can't just hop on Newegg and order all the parts for a build like this in one day, if you put a little bit of time into deal searching on websites like Build a PC Sales and Slick Deals, you could very easily end up with a build for a similar price with very similar specs. And you definitely should, because it offers some great value. While I only paid $250 for this build, if I wanted to go out and buy all the parts today, it would cost me around $375, 50% more than what I paid. So if you're looking at the game and you're on a pretty tight budget, before you go out and buy that console, go look on some deal sites and maybe put some time into it so that you can build yourself a killer gaming PC like this for the same price. If you like this video, be sure to like it. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at techalways with two S's. Thanks for watching. Bye.